Hello again. It's story time. Hey. And today's story is quite a long one called Oliver's Treehouse Friends. And it's written by Bruce, written and illustrated by Bruce Pearden. And Bruce's beautiful illustrations, one of which you can see here, uh, were all done with either uh, putting the paintbrush in his feet or his mouth. And you're going to get to see lots more of his pictures inside the book. I'm going to read this one. Uh, I'm going to do half in this video and I'm going to do half in a second video because it's a long story. So I'll do part one and part two. And so this is part one. And there's lots of Australian bush animals in this story. This is a koala. And down here we have a flying possum, which they talk about in the story. So we'll begin. Oliver was a five-year-old boy who lived with his mum and his dad in a lovely home which was surrounded by tall eucalypt trees and bushland. These beautiful big trees. And here we have a beautiful bottle brush flower and a little butterfly sitting on top of it. Oliver's dad was an airline pilot, exciting job, who was sometimes away for nearly a whole week. But when his dad was not working, he would spend lots of days playing with Oliver. Every time an aeroplane would fly overhead, Oliver would wave because he knew his dad would be able to see him and it meant he would be home soon. Although Oliver had lots of friends at preschool, he had no brothers and sisters and no young children as neighbours. And so sometimes he played with friends that he pretended were there. Oliver's mum and dad knew their little boy had pretend friends and sometimes when he was playing they could hear him talking to someone and whenever they looked, they could only see Oliver. So they would look and smile and say, Oliver is with his imaginary friends again today. But sometimes I wonder myself whether children do actually see other people in the room or other friends in the room. One day, a truck pulled up at Oliver's house and delivered a big load of timber which made Oliver very curious. Hmm, me too. He asked his mum what the timber was for and she smiled and told him that his dad was going to do some work when he came home from flying. When Oliver's dad arrived home for his three day break, he told Oliver that he would need his help for he had to build something very important. Hmm, I wonder what it's gonna be. Oliver was so pleased that he was going to help and happily worked all day, handing his dad nails, holding the measuring tape, and slowly the building took shape. Oh, I hope we're going to get to see what it is on the next page. <gasps> Look, it's a tree house. <gasps> There's Oliver standing at the bottom of the ladder. And finally it was finished and it was the best looking tree house a boy could ever have. It was built around this big old gum tree and it had a balcony or a veranda we call it, an old ladder and even a window that Oliver's dad had bought at a second hand timber yard. Oliver hugged his mum and dad and thanked them 
for giving him such a lovely present. And look at this beautiful fellow. This is an owl, boo book owl, I think. It was getting quite late by the time the treehouse was completed, so Oliver just had a short while to play in it before his mum called him for his bath and dinner. Oliver, it's dinner time. He has to go in. Working with his dad on the treehouse had made him very sleepy. So after dinner, Oliver brushed his teeth and was soon tucked up in bed. Then, excited with thoughts of what wonderful games he would play in his new cubby, he drifted off to sleep. But as Oliver slept, there was all kinds of activity outside in the bush. Creatures who had slept or hidden away in the trees by day were waking up and starting to search around for food. Animals and birds that do this are called nocturnal. They sleep in the daytime and then they come out at night time to eat and play, like this owl. Mm -hmm. It's a funny looking frog with long legs. High up in the tree, a green tree frog stirred from his daytime sleep and jumped from branch to branch. He looked around and then plopped down on the balcony of the tree house, thinking to himself, hmm, this would make a good spot to sit and wait for a passing insect that he would gobble up for his dinner. And next, this is the possum that I showed you at the beginning of the book. It's called a possum glider. Next, a sugar glider, which is a little possum that can spread open flaps between its front and back legs and glide from one tree to the other headed on to a branch and peered curiously at the treehouse and wondered what it could be. <laughs> and then a friendly old ring-tailed possum. Can you see it there? A friendly old ringtail possum climbed up into the treehouse balcony, cautiously sniffed around and decided there was no danger and so went inside. This would make an excellent place to sleep during the day, thought the, the ringtail possum. And after I have had my dinner, I think I will come back here. And off he went in search of some food. Lots of animals coming out and finding, discovering the tree house. There's a koala. Early next morning, just as the dawn was breaking, a koala was looking for a nice tree in which to spend the whole day sleeping. Now, as it happened, the tree around which Oliver's treehouse had been built was one of the koala's favourite trees. As the koala started to climb the tree, he noticed something strange had happened. What's happened to my tree? Thought the koala, and he started to make grumpy noises. <laughs> and then he noticed a ladder, still grumbling. <laughs> he decided to climb the ladder to find out what was going on, and you can imagine his surprise when he saw his mate, the ring-tailed possum, in the treehouse. What are you doing in here? asked the koala. 
I thought I'd sleep in here for the day, said Ringtail. It's so nice and sheltered. Hmm, good idea, said Koala. I think I'll join you. And so the friends set about making themselves comfortable for the day and soon they were drifting off to sleep. Oliver was woken by the sound of a laughing kookaburra. And when he looked out of his window, he saw the bird sitting on the balcony of his tree house. He was immediately filled with excitement at the thought of playing in his tree house and he quickly got dressed and went down for breakfast. There he is, outside the tree house. When he'd finished his breakfast, he took the little telescope that his dad had given him and he went out to his tree house. It was Saturday, so he had all day to play. Mm, goody. So that's the end of part one. And I'll read part two in the next video. See you then.